are here with fabulous Acadian trio Vishten. We're so excited to be chatting to you guys today. Um, could you just introduce yourselves one at a time? Let me know your name and uh, what you play in the band. Yeah, my name is Emmanuel Leblanc and I play octave mandolin, whistles, boron, uh, piano, juice harp, I do foot percussion and I sing. My name is Pastel Leblanc and I play piano accordion, piano, I do some foot percussion and I sing. My name is Pascal Nius. I play fiddle, I play mandolin, I play guitar, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, I play bass and I sing. <laughs> wow, you're all doing a heck of a lot, that's amazing. Um, we love your music, we loved your music for a long time before we even knew we were going to be involved in Global Music Match. So it was such a pleasure to find out that we were on the, on the same team as you guys. Um, and yeah, I've been getting to know your, your wonderful um, repertoire a little bit more intimately over the past few weeks and it's been wonderful. And um, we wonder, and I'm sure it's not the first time you've been asked this question, um, why are you called Vishten? What does it mean? It means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it actually does mean nothing, but it is, it represents, um, it's, a song. it's a song, so it represents kind of our, our culture because in the history of the Acadians, we went through a deportation uh, back in the 1750s. And so when that happened, we um, we joined forces, I guess, or the with the Mi'kmaqs that helped us survive and, and pretty much survive and, and still be here today. And so this song is kind of a mix of French Acadian, Mi'kmaq language and English, and it became super popular um, in our communities like a while back. So we learned it in school. And people, you know, uh, they learned the, the song all over Canada. We've heard it in the U.S. as well. So a song by choirs sometimes. It's, yeah. it's really impressive. Yeah. But it's essentially a made up language. Yeah. And uh, kind of a, yeah, percussive type of song. Mm -hmm. It's a mix of culture. Yes. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thanks. Um, and how did you form? How did you get together? Um, we met a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of guessed that, yeah, you guys go way back, right? <laughs> so, um, I guess we formed a band called Saltitude back in like 2000 and uh, we started touring a little bit and playing a bit with this fiddler called Melissa Galant and um, eventually she figured out that she didn't want to tour. Touring wasn't for her and so we were looking for an awesome fiddle player and we ended up meeting Pascal's brother uh, at a festival and he was like my brother plays the fiddle you should hire him for your band and we're like yeah right he plays the fiddle <laughs> I'm sure he's you know we didn't know Pascal at the time um, but we did end up one night uh, inviting him over for a few tunes and we discovered this incredible musician and asked him if he wanted to join and he said yes 17 years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a while back. Yeah. And since then, I guess Pascal joined, and that's when we started really touring more. Uh, started, we recorded the first album within three months, I think, that he joined yeah. the band, and mm -hmm. we just kept going after that. Yeah. I saw that you've recorded quite a lot of albums over the years. How many is it in total? Seven or six? Six, six I think. Six. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I, I saw that you got a, a Canadian Grammy for your latest album, which is awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. But could you tell us about the themes and, uh, and the sort of influences on this last album? The theme. Yeah. Uh, we work with a guy called Simon Marignan as a producer. Uh, I think it's um, his last project with, with uh, uh, Horizon. Our album. So we worked with him, and uh, it was great to uh, work with him. With a great studio in uh, in Quebec as well, Joliet, uh, who's La Botte en to record, and a lot of great band record that in that studio as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was a great, great experience to uh, to play there and record there with him. Thanks. A few weeks, yeah, yeah. and uh, like we knew that Simon was from the traditional world because he's from that area, and and they have a big um, sing singing tradition. So he's very much knows the traditional music, and we've you know met him, but but he's also very evolved in what he yeah. he does. So uh, I think he has a he's 
done a lot of jazz music and pop and you know so so his horizons are, are very kind of wide and we wanted we really wanted to do an album with somebody that kind of had the both worlds but yeah. could push us further mm -hmm. in the styles or in the the ideas that we had and so it was it, and it was great to work with him because he did have a lot of great ideas and he was pushing us to do things that we didn't do before but that we always wanted to do like put my accordion through a, an amp and crank <laughs> you know crank some stuff so there was like some yeah. nice create creative things the tone the was tones. great to, to, to work on different tones like uh, piano roads piano we uh, yeah. put in our last album uh, a lot electric guitar a lot of for percussion innovation mm -hmm. and stuff like that so mm -hmm. it was a great 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 time to uh, do that yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> well it's, a, it's very successfully done i have to say because the the melding of all those different sounds and styles um just yeah really really works it's a, such an enjoyable record to listen to thank oh, you thank you very much <laughs> can you can you tell us a bit um about a bit more about Acadian music. How is it listening to? Yeah, um, so Acadian music, um, I mean, as people, as you can hear in our sound, it's very Celtic and, and a lot of Irish and Scottish influences. Um, and that just comes from the history of how people immigrated to Eastern Canada. So our background or our, our family trees and our, our ancestors come from France, Normandy, Brittany, different parts and they settled in the East Coast. Then the deportation happened and then all these other influences came in. So essentially in Acadian music, if we talk about traditional Acadian music, it will be French songs, a lot of call and answer, a lot of complaint, which would be more uh, ballads yes. type of things. Yeah. And those all pretty much originate from our roots in France. Although there's there's been some new compositions of lyrics and things like that. And on the musical side, well, we just kind of took all of those Celtic influences by, you know, probably having house parties and meeting all of these people and just wanting to have a good time. Um, music uh, in Acadia is mainly, you know, done, you know, if you get together, you don't go to a pub here, it's all always in the houses. And so those mixes kind of just all came together. Um, they music in a different style. Uh, we play a little slower than uh, you know the Irish or Scottish in, in some sense and like Pascal's a fiddle player that would use a lot of different bowing techniques that are pretty specific to uh, Acadia his region of the Magdalen Islands which is very similar to some Acadian fiddlers that are on Prince Edward Island and I think those kind of bowing techniques uh, have a lot to do with our surroundings because we're from an island so the sounds of the boats or um, wind. The wind, or Waves. you know, things like that. So I'll bring this kind of rhythm into it, and plus matched with foot percussion, which is very Acadian, um, mm. also done by the Quebecois tradition in Canada. So those two things, plus the songs, kind of distinguishes what Acadian music is. Yeah. And we just try to compose a lot of our own stuff as well. So it just brings a different type of spin to it, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I was I was going to ask you guys about how you um, uh, incorporate the, the sense of place and, and local environment into music because it's to me it's really obviously there. Um, I mean, I was listening to your tune, the Three Blizzards, um, yeah. which was apparently inspired by a particularly harsh winter. Am I right? Yeah, yeah exactly. We we got like um, eighteen lands like three four years ago or no 2015 yeah. 15, yeah. yeah but like yeah 20 feet of snow in like two months and a half it was like really <laughs> intense Allô, je m'appelle Emmanuel Leblanc, je fais partie du groupe Vichten. Euh, on vous présente la pièce « Trois Blizzards ». Ça a été euh, composé lors de l'hiver 2015, où on a reçu 549 cm de neige. My name is Emmanuel Leblanc, and I'm part of Vichten, and we present to you « Three Blizzards um, ». It's uh, in honor of the winter of 2015, where we had 549 centimeters of snow.
snow to snow that the island has seen is in like a hundred years. Yeah. And and we were home that winter in a little cottage. They were living, we in, were the living country, in the country. So it was like just like wood stove and like stuck in the cottage for two yeah. days kind of scene, which was really inspiring. Yeah. So yeah, you kind of hear the winds and <laughs> but could be rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure we can we can't even imagine that as as brits like <laughs> yeah. we we freak out when there's two centimeters of snow on the ground the world stops turning <laughs> yeah we've been there like during like this teeny tiny snow and people are freaking out yeah. we're like yeah <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah hilarious the way that you incorporate um the environment into your music is that something that you feel like personally um, between you is it is it important to you to do that to continue to do that hmm. I don't I think, think I've so. really thought of it but yeah yeah <laughs> but, yeah it's not I don't think it's a really intentional thing like you think oh we should do that but no. I think we all three of us probably just that's the way we are yeah. yeah and so we do you know absorb a lot of things that happened around us Whether it's for sure I think it's natural for us to do that yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, cool. fun, so yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting when someone else listens to your music and pick up on something that you didn't even realize was yeah. necessarily there. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of um, an intrinsic thing, I guess, but um, it's just sort of like within you, a bit like a, a DNA kind of feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, maybe that's the way that our family, you know, sees things as well. And we just kind of picked up on their, you know, our family, our community, the way that we all kind of play music together, because that's kind of how we all learn too, is from people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sitting there's, down and playing tunes with someone. That's there's no course you. or university yeah. degree that you can get in, in Acadia music. Right. Or no music at all. You, you kind of just have to go for it and, and, and seek out those opportunities or get invited somewhere or just play on your own type of thing. So yeah, we probably just picked it up from our, for our surroundings. When we were, when we were staying in Montreal after folk Alliance, we, we were at that Quebecois jam, which was amazing in, in Montreal. And I really did get that sense of kind of community and family from that. So, you know, I was, I was going to ask, do you think family and this idea of, of, of keeping a community together, um is really you know is that a really important idea when it comes to making your music this is music for families music for parties music for gatherings and there is that really joyous sense do you think about that when you're composing at all yeah i think so mm -hmm. i think we're aware that yeah. you know it's important for the communities to keep the music alive and that it gets passed on to the next generation um on both our islands we're lucky that people are aware of that and they they will push their, you know, their kids to go to lessons or even the community. I know our community like uh, bought like a bunch of fiddles just for like a kind of a noontime lunch thing that they they wanted to do. So there is like an effort to keep the music part present, present. and and we do see it, you know, working because it's not every Acadian community that. Uh, has a traditional music scene. A lot of them, it, it got lost and it just didn't pass on to the next generation. So we do see that a lot. And also it has um, to do with what they were listening to on the radio, which is funny. Because we're on Prince Edward Island and we had Cape Breton radio yeah. accessible, we could get those influences here. But in other Acadian parts, they might've had an American radio from Maine or something, and they would have gotten influenced more by like bluegrass and things like that. So, yeah. so that's kind of a really cool concept, I guess, that all Acadian music is not the same. Mm -hmm. um, but when we compose, I think like we want to have kind of happy, like gathering type of music, maybe something that people can dance to or relate to or, or feel good, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. We think, oh yeah, we're gonna do a lot of festivals this next year how do we want people to feel when they come to see your show yeah I know and another thing I guess is like the when it comes to tunes like the kind of the, the dancing like we have a lot of step dancing that's never gone away it's like even I think more popular than it was but the social dancing I mean right now we can't social dance and have like burn dances but they they have been coming back on PEI in the past probably three four years 
And one of her friends, Ward McDonald, like, I remember 20 years ago, we were like just finishing high school and and talking about like, wouldn't it be fun that it would come back? Because it hadn't, there weren't any young people going to the dances anymore. Um, and so I think there is like a kind of a movement in, in a lot of young people here to like write music that is still traditional and danceable, but that has a, a contemporary element. And that's really cool to see because then you go to those dances and you hear that music or they'll have like a disco tread dance party like yeah. with the East Pointers, like there's there's like a community feel yeah. all over the island where you feel like there's a bunch of people kind of trying to mm -hmm. keep this, you know, alive and, mm -hmm. and not and for everybody, like yeah. all ages. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Definitely um, get that feeling when we've seen bands play at UK festivals um, from from Prince Edward Island. There's quite a it's quite a strong relationship there, isn't there, between the two music scenes. And um, I always feel really um, inspired by the bands that, that come from PEI because they are bringing something really fresh to that sort of traditional genre. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do, you, do you find that it is encouraging younger people to get into it? Yeah, I love to talk with young people and just <clears throat> explain to, to them to a uh, to just listen, you can, do you know uh, trap music? Uh, no, but listen to that and uh, and listen to that. You see, and I have a son. He, uh, he has uh, 17 years old, and he, he, he like a lot of kind of music. But when I remember that forever, I uh, was listening with him, Michael McGoldrick, with a great album with a lot of sound in it, and he's a bass player. So we just fall in love and my son was, oh my God, this is cool, this is rock, this is cool. And said, so for me, for me, it's really cool to, to have that approach with young people to just, okay, it's not just na 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 music folk or trap, it's, it, it can be rocks, it yeah. can be fucking, yeah. So but a lot of people, they don't know that. So for us, we need, for me anyway, and I, I think for us, we need to just, okay, give us a try and just go for one show and you see and that happens sometimes so that's great you know so this one's a bit of a curveball but can you tell <laughs> us can you tell us something interesting that i definitely do not know about prince edward island <laughs> um and i'm give it no no, oh, no. <laughs> uh, do you know what color the soil is Brown. <laughs> no. No. Red. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People live on PI? No. No. One hundred and sixty thousand. Sixty. Sixty. Yeah. I think it's going up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the red is is just there's a lot of iron in the soil, mm -hmm. and. So for some reason, not in New Brunswick, which is yeah, just like, just there, they don't they have gray, brown gray soil, summer. and we and the Magdalen Islands we have like bright red soil. So. Just kind of Google it, so I'm not sure I believe yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty stunning with the green and the blue of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Is it the room is a tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is another colorful question. What is the best experience that you've had as a band? Ooh. Mm. Couple. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Play with the symphony in Nova Scotia was one great thing because the symphony, yeah. yeah, was great, but a lot more. But it's one of them for me the as new, a band to play with yeah. the symphony in Nova Scotia uh, three times, I think, mm -hmm. or two times. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous to have a backup band like <laughs> uh, fucking <laughs> symphony. <laughs> 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 It was, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's one of them for me. But, yeah, but we went no. to New Zealand and we had this really amazing, say, this um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know we all really got yeah. moved by that, but it was a, it was a ceremony at the start of the festival um, with the native tribe there, and everybody was kind of lined up one in front of each other. So we were the bands that were all part of the festival, and then 
the organizers and everybody that was living on the land. And we all had to share something together. We all had to either be like, oh, this is a little song. I'm giving this to you or or just a nice word or something. And we all did this. Uh, And then we kind of went over and we kissed on the on the nose that's, it how, was, that's how they that's how they would they greet kind of each hug other. or they greet and it was yeah. beautiful it was something we never experienced before and it was right before our performance so we got that was really we special. got chills yeah yeah mm, that sounds amazing what festival was that the mm. nelson arts music festival Nice. That was like the the last gig of the of the tour, and we got to travel all over New Zealand. It was really nice. And the last bit was, yeah, this big ferry, kind of on in the roughest waters um, in the world, but we were okay that day. And then we just yeah finished off with that with that festival. It was great. Do you have um, plans to release an album anytime soon? Um, Have you been working on new music? Um, How have the last few months treated you? We just started two, years, two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We started two days ago to uh, create new music and yeah. an album we'll see, but it's obviously for, for that, but we're going to take one tune at a time and uh, we have time for that now. So it's good to be back on track with some inspiration and, yeah. and music in yeah. our head. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, last couple of months were, were good, like for, you know, a COVID summer. Uh, a lot of festivals went online. So we did some shows there and then we got commissioned to do a few kind of cool things, which was great. Uh, A cover of another Acadian artist tune. And then we got hired to do an Anne of Green Gables song (laughs) from the musical. So (laughs) that was kind of fun. Um, Yeah. So it's been keeping us busy and the fall will be just more creation and, and yeah, looking forward to some new music too, because we feel like we've done a couple live stream shows and now to present another live stream, we'd like to have some new kind yeah. of material and, and something fresh to, to mm-hmm. present. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you go about writing together? Do you all chip in different ideas? How does it work? Yeah, it's, it's different every time, but I think we uh, all have, you know, ideas on our phones that we just record once in a while or when we get an inspiration. Um, and then we'll just kind of, yeah, present to the, the others, like this is an idea I'm working on. And when it comes to arrangement, we're pretty much all there. Like nobody tells somebody else, like do this, yeah. we'll just like try <laughs> present, this. try, th- yeah, maybe try this, <laughs> <laughs> do this, doesn't work. No. Um, and then, and then we'll just like together, just kind of get the arrangements. Uh, yeah. So it can be, and. On the last album, I think it was our first like composition together, like a tune where we had three parts and yeah. I think we composed, but yeah. we usually will write the tunes ourselves or maybe a part A and then somebody will write a part B. So I think we're more, we work well on our, on our own in that sense and then mm-hmm. come together. Come, together. come together yeah. after, yeah. Cool. And are there any particular sort of concepts that you're thinking of exploring for this new fresh material? Hmm. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, maybe you know it's 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 really new. So, but we uh, with Horizon, we uh, I think we're gonna keep on that way again. But maybe more, you know. Yeah, same same way, but different. Anyway, the only yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I Pretty hope good. we're gonna we're gonna meet each other in real someday. Yeah, yeah, that oh, would be nice. Oh nice. so, yeah, for sure. You'd love that. Yeah. Have you been to PEI yet? No, not yet. No. Okay. <laughs> One day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see the soil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just look at the soil and then <laughs> <laughs> see it all. <laughs> yeah. I want- uh, we started um, a collaboration with Katrin Finch and Seku Keita uh, from Wales and uh, we were supposed to do our tour I guess this past May but we've rebooked it for next spring that's the plan <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there's a bunch of dates uh, yeah, yeah. Well, two tour we, we can send you the, the, the cities and links if they're close to you that'd be great yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah do. Oh, cool. 
to, to check out the band, we have a website, it's bishten.net. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, and it's all under Vishten Music. Uh, pretty easy to find if you just Google it. And uh, also on Spotify, and I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. It's been so, so lovely to chat to you. Um, we're really looking forward to, to sharing this interview with our fans um, and your music because we know they're going to love it. Um, good luck with um, the rest of your each week and we'll speak to you again really soon, hopefully. And we'll see you in England next year, all being well as well. So thank you so much. Um, and we'll chat to you again really soon. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.